What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about hub-centric rings, especially when you go from stock wheels into aftermarket wheels on your car. So we're gonna go ahead and get this passenger side front tire off and talk a little bit about hub-centric rings, what they do and what you should look out for and why you should get the correct ones for your car. So now with my aftermarket wheel removed from the car and my OEM Audi wheel sitting right here, we're gonna talk a little about hub-centric rings and something that I learned at least going with this. So if you look at the Audi wheel, this diameter right here is going to match the hub on the car. Obviously this car was designed and built by Audi and these specific wheels, you know, Audi sourced them to be built to fit perfectly. So the diameter of this hub right here is going to be the same diameter as this center bore hub right there. So if we look at it, just kind of a loose measurement, it's almost two and a quarter inch. And when I look at this, same sort of deal. So obviously when this wheel is sitting on the hub of the car, it sits nice and tight. This wheel can be mounted on the circle right here, the hub, and it's not gonna go up and down. It's gonna be perfectly centered within the entire hub assembly and the rotor assembly on the car. That way there's no vibrations or anything like that. Now, if we look at the aftermarket wheel, a lot of aftermarket wheels, the center bore is gonna be a lot larger than the hub on your car. The main reason is because when manufacturers are building these wheels, they want this wheel to fit as many cars as possible. So they're gonna make the center bore a lot larger to where they only have to mess with different bolt patterns. That way it just makes it a little bit easier for manufacturing. And that's just kind of how manufacturers do it, especially on more uh, entry level and mid level wheels. So if we take the tape measure now, so we're at like two and a quarter inch, this one right here, we are at almost two and three quarters inch. So needless to say, if I put this aftermarket wheel on this hub, it will shake up and down and that's not good. Then you're only relying on the lug nuts that are gonna be holding this onto this. Now, something that I found with the car, I did get a set of hub centric rings. If I can find them. These ones right here. Now these ones are made out of plastic now I've had plastic ones before. However, the ones I've had before were a solid uh, polycarbonate, like really durable thick plastic. These ones somehow, hopefully the camera can pick this up. They are actually hollow. You can see how it has the outer diameter edge and an inner diameter edge, but the inside is actually hollow. That's a good way to see it right there. And what I found with these are, these are garbage. <laughs> so what I had, I had a little issue with the Audi for the last week, there was a vibration. I even had the wheels rebalanced because I wasn't quite sure uh, what was going on. You know, the wheels and tires came nicely mounted and balanced and everything. They're brand new tires. The manufacturing date on the tires is 2022 and everything got balanced, rebalanced, squared away to where everything was nice. And yet I was still getting a vibration. I could feel it anywhere between 30 miles an hour all the way up to 100 miles an hour. It was just a slow vibration, like a rotational vibration basically, where every rotation you could just feel something. And on the highway, the car just had the slightest, you could really only feel it kind of in your legs and in your butt when cruising on the highway. Just a kind of like that, just a consistent bumpy feeling like that. It wasn't crazy dramatic where the car was shaking, but when we had items in the back seat, you could see them just shaking just a little bit. So here's what I did. Obviously I had experience with plastic hub centric rings in the past that were solid. This did get me thinking that maybe because they're hollow, they're actually not doing anything because the goal of a hub centric ring is to of course make this and this nice and tight together. That way when the wheel is sitting on the hub, there is no up and down shaking. It is perfectly centered on the hub and the rotor and everything spins perfectly and the lug nuts simply tighten it onto the hub of the car. They don't have to also try to keep it from going up and down. So on Amazon, these were 15 bucks. I ordered aluminum ones, solid aluminum as you can see, and they have the correct inner diameter and the correct outer diameter that will fit. So as you can see, if I put these on here, it fits nice and tight and I can't move this up and down or left or right. It's perfectly centered. If I rotate it, it spins perfectly. So that's the inner diameter. The outer diameter going onto the aftermarket wheels, it fits nice and snug inside. And as you can see, I can rotate it, but I can't go up and down. Now these plastic ones are also the exact same diameter. So theoretically they should work fine. They fit on here perfect. 
there's no wiggle room, and then they fit in here perfect with no wiggle room. But I think because they're hollow, there's actually no structure. And that's why I'm making this video is because not all hub centric rings are created equally. You want ones that are solid because apparently that makes a difference. With these solid aluminum ones now filling that void in the wheel and in the hub, the vibration is 100% gone and the car is back to being insanely smooth. That's one thing I love about Audis especially is how smooth they drive. And this was driving me crazy. I didn't know if my alignment was jacked up. I didn't know if I messed up the suspension. I didn't know if the tires themselves were messed up. But being, you know, name brand Michelin's, brand new tires from this year even, everything's balanced perfectly. Everything was squared away. The only other thing I could think of was maybe the lug nuts weren't correct. But the lug nuts seat themselves perfectly into the wheels. And that left me with the last thing, which was the hub-centric ring. So this is gonna be a short video, but I just wanted to let you guys know that if you are doing aftermarket wheels and you don't have hub-centric rings, make sure you go with solid aluminum ones or the solid polyurethane ones. If you ever see these ones again, the hollow looking plastic, don't even use them. These are a Gorilla brand. I've never really heard of that brand. Um, I've never heard of this brand either. I just found these on Amazon but you definitely wanna stick with a solid one. That way you're completely getting rid of any wiggle room or anything. Because with this one in place, while yes, it does at a slow speed, sandwich it nice and tight, there's going to be flex. I mean, these I can bend, as you can see with my hands. The aluminum ones, I cannot budge. Obviously they're solid billet aluminum and having solid hub centric rings is what solved the vibration issue. So if you have a vibration in your car after doing aftermarket wheels, look at your hub centric rings, make sure you have solid ones. When I had the Toyota Supra, I had two different set of the same exact brand wheels, and they had these solid polyurethane hub-centric rings. Never had an issue. My GTR, I have very expensive wheels on that. The hub of those wheels fit perfectly to the car, so no rings needed on that. But with the Audi, of course, going with a more affordable style wheel, these ones were going to need a hub-centric ring, and I'm really glad that I solved the vibration issues by going with these aluminum ones. Now, I'm gonna have these linked down below. I found them on Amazon. They have all sorts of different sizes. Get the sizes that fit your own car, obviously. So for these ESR wheels, in case you are buying these for your own car, most likely the outer diameter is gonna be 72.6 around that in millimeters. So this is exactly what I went with. As you can see, they were insanely cheap. And of course you can swipe over and get all sorts of different sizes depending on your own car and of course your own wheels. So you just have to make sure you get the correct combination of the inner diameter, which is gonna be obviously the inside one that goes to your car and then the outer diameter, which of course is going to go onto your aftermarket wheel. So that's what I did for the Audi to solve the vibration. Again, quick video, I just wanted to mention this because I could not for the life of me figure this out. I talked with people on the Audi forums um, not really any good information. Nobody even talked about hub centric rings. The only thing I heard was make sure you have hub centric rings and make sure you have good ones. So I'm going to add that to people who say that. Don't get hollow plastic ones. These are just what came with it. Uh, different brands sent me these, but um, clearly not the way to go. Solid is the way to go. So quick video for today, guys, just kind of a PSA for those of you doing aftermarket wheels solid hub centric rings and that is at least one way to solve vibration. See you guys in the next video.